The chicken is simmered in a rich sauce with prosciutto, peppers, and wine. Make it ahead of time, then just heat it up when you're ready to serve. Spend more time with your guests, not in the kitchen, with my Roman-style chicken. First thing I want to do for my Roman chicken is heat my pan because we are going to brown the chicken breast and I want to make sure the pan is nice and hot. So bring it up to about a medium high and I want to season the chicken. I'm using chicken breasts and chicken thighs so there's a little bit for everybody. I like to use skinless chicken and leave the bone in because it adds more flavor. Because the chicken is being cooked in a sauce and simmered for quite some time, you don't have to worry about the chicken being too dry. A little more salt right here on the two little thighs. And the thigh meat gives it a lot of flavor as well. Pan's nice and hot. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil, just so this chicken doesn't stick to the pan. And we'll start searing our chicken. Hear that sizzle? That's what you want. And it'll give you a nice golden crust on the outside of the chicken. And in turn, those little bits, those little brown bits at the bottom of the pan are going to give so much flavor to the sauce. Move that over, make room for all the chicken. Okay, now you want to leave it alone just for a couple of minutes and then we'll flip it over to the other side and we'll finish cooking it in the broth, in the sauce. Looks good. In the meantime, I am going to slice my peppers. And I'm using yellow and red peppers. Now traditionally, this is a dish that in Rome can make it the day ahead, and the longer it sits, actually, the better it tastes because the flavors really melt together. And we'll just slice all our peppers. Add some garlic. Gotta add some garlic to this. Add two cloves, what the heck. Perfect. We'll leave that. Now, we're gonna brown the other side. See? It kind of creates this, just this golden crust on the outside of the chicken. And it's gonna be kind of like a little salty little crust because we added salt and pepper to the outside of the chicken. In the meantime, let me just cut up my prosciutto. And we're just gonna roll it up just like this and then slice it. Now, prosciutto and chicken work so well together. It adds that little salty bite inside of the chicken. Okay, so we've got everything prepped while the chicken browns. We can take the chicken out. Two, three. See that beautiful brown color? Ooh, love that. A little bit more oil, just like that. And I'm going to add the red and yellow peppers. Nice hot pan and the prosciutto. And we'll just let the prosciutto get a little bit crispy. We'll add a little bit of salt. There we go. And some pepper. Again, flavoring each element and each step of the way. All right, while those cook for a minute, I am going to chop my herbs. Now, I'm gonna add some fresh thyme and fresh oregano. I love using the thyme and the oregano because they're strong, hearty herbs, and so they hold up really well in the long simmer and in the reheat. Just chop it all up. And I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic right now. And the peppers act as a bed for the garlic, so it doesn't burn. And immediately the heat, you can sort of smell the fragrance of the garlic. That's what you want. Okay, I'm gonna add the thyme and the oregano right on top. And we're ready for our liquid. Canned tomato. The broth of the tomato is gonna help create that sauce, that red sauce around the chicken and keep the chicken moist. See, the liquid from the tomatoes is picking up all the brown bits at the bottom of the pan. It thickens the sauce, gives it flavor, and creates this kind of thickness and heartiness to it. Now we're gonna add about a half a cup of chicken broth. You need a little liquid in order to continue to simmer and cook the chicken. Low sodium so I can control how much salt goes into my sauce. And 
for some flavor, some white wine. The tanginess and the tartness from the uh, white wine adds so much flavor to this. What I really love about cooking are the wonderful aromas from the addition of each ingredient. Now, chicken goes back into the dish. Let's make enough room for all the chicken. Let's put all of those in there, fit them in nicely. They're kind of cozying up next to each other. I'm gonna simmer the chicken for another 20 to 30 minutes, just until it's cooked through and it thickens slightly, and all those flavors are gonna just melt together. And then I'm gonna cool it down, bring it to room temperature, and store it in the fridge till tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna finish it off with some capers and some fresh parsley. And this dish only gets better the longer it sits. The chicken's been heating for a few minutes. And let's see here. Oh. Looks good, smells good. And you don't have to worry about the chicken being dry because it's been marinating in the sauce. And also it's absorbed all the flavors of the peppers and the prosciutto and the tomatoes. Cannot wait. All right, one more thing, two more things I gotta add. Capers and some parsley. Capers are classic in Mediterranean cooking and I just love that tanginess they have and that little bit of salty bite. So I'm adding them right at the end so they hold their shape and they just add a little bit of tanginess and I love that color. And now, some fresh parsley. And any time I make a dish the day before, I always like to finish it with something fresh. So parsley is a really good way to sort of add freshness to the dish. It kind of brings it alive. And you just want that little bit of color contrast, you know, that nice bright green color. Add that right in right over the top. You just sprinkle it right over the chicken. And just mix that around a little bit. Okay, ready to plate the chicken. And then a nice spoonful of the sauce. Ah -ha -ha right over the chicken. And there's prosciutto, tomatoes, peppers, yellow and red peppers. 